this is a fun build. It's a great build. It's a great backyard game. It's very easy to do. Pretty much anybody could do it. You don't have to have the tools that you'll see in the video. You can make do with just a few you can make do with just a few simple tools. And so the total cost to build this, you're looking at about $20 to $25. You only need six two by fours, 20 two and a half inch exterior screws, and 10 three inch pan head screws and two three and a half to four inch bolts with washers and nuts. So before we get into the build, if you're gonna do it to sell it, I would recommend selling these for about 200 to $240, $250, somewhere in there. I think that's a sweet spot for this. And so I glued the top on this. You don't have to do that, but I decided to do it just because I wanted to do that. If you don't use glue and clamps, you can use a backboard from some of the extra scrap to screw into the backside to keep all the boards together. I glued and clamped it. To do that, I started by cutting the two by fours down to rough length, which is about 48 inches. I'm going to cut the whole panel down to 46 inches. So I cut eight 48 inch two by four cutoffs. And I walked over to the joiner and I started joining these and then ripping them down to a three inch width. So I joined them first using the level and the table saw. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to rip it down to a three inch length. Eight of those boards will give me a 24 inch wide panel by roughly 48 inches. I'm going to set those in clamps I'm going to apply glue. I'm going to clamp it down. And while it's setting up, I'm going to move on to the next step, which is cutting out the legs, cutting out the sides for the support of the backboard. To support the backboard, I basically made an apron like you would for a table. And then I made two legs that fold into that apron. To start making the apron, I cut everything again down to rough length. I then go to the table saw because I don't like the roundovers that you get from the big box store. I like my lumber to be pretty well cornered, pretty straight, pretty nice. I, I just think that looks better than the roundovers that you get from the big box store. So I like to cut them down the length. I like to take them roundovers off and I cut everything down to three inches wide. The aprons I cut down, the long aprons I cut down to 46 inches long. The short aprons, the ones that will go in between, the two long aprons, I cut those down to 21 inches long. So for the apron frame, you should have two 46 inch long, one and a half by three inch boards, and two 21 inch long, one and a half inch wide by three inch boards. And I didn't do any Craig jigging, any pocket hole, and anything like that. It doesn't have to be fancy. I just threw some screws into the side of it. I did three screws. But I eventually set it on only needing two screws per connection. So I did two screws on each corner, screwing the long aprons into the sides of the short aprons. And you'll see it in the video. Now you'll also see that I have a little bit of a twist. That's because I didn't surface any of this wood. It's an outdoor project. I'm not going to spend a lot of time milling the wood down for something that's really going to get tore up anyway. And I'll probably have to rebuild it next year. So you'll see whenever I'm attaching this, there's a little bit of a bow or a twist in it where it's not sitting flat. That'll all come out when I screw it down to the actual backboard itself. So if you have the same issue, don't worry about it. Keep going. Let's get the legs. Let's get the apron attached to the backboard. Then we'll put the legs. Once you take the panel out of clamps, you need to cut the panel down to size. Now you don't have to use a track saw to do this. I have one, so that's what I used. Before I got the track saw, I used to use a hand sucker. Uh, before I bought the Festool track saw, I had a hand circular saw that I would use to cut using a straight edge. That's perfectly fine. I did that for years. It works just fine. So once the glue is dry on the backboard, we're going to take that out of clamps. We're going to set it on our work surface and set the apron on the back side. You don't have to worry about surfacing it down like you would a tabletop because it's not a tabletop. It's going to get tore up with a hatchet, right? So we don't want to spend a lot of time sanding it or surfacing it, making sure it's all perfectly flat and level because it's going to get destroyed. So we're going to lay the face side down with the back side facing up. We're going to put the apron on top of that. Make sure your corners are as square as you could possibly get it. I find it's easiest to clamp it down and then I start cutting out my inset. Would you call that an inset hole? Where you use the force in a bit, go down a little bit to give you a like a drop in surface. You don't have to do that. I did it because I'm just using the screws that I had. So for this step, three and a half inch pan head screws will work just fine. You'll see that I'm using some longer ones. 
just because that's what I had and I was feeling lazy. I didn't want to go back to Home Depot. So I clamped the frame down to the back side. I think I used a three quarter forcing a bit, drilled out a little inset, pre-drilled my holes and then screwed the back apron down into the back board. With that in place, it's time to move on and start setting the leg. Now, originally, I had the legs going the full length of the frame, and after looking at it, I didn't think that would work. So I took them out and I cut them down to a shorter length. I wound up going with 36 inch long legs. At the top and bottom of each leg, I did cut a little 45 degree angle. That's just to give it some room to open and close without getting hung up on anything. I think if you don't cut out that 90 degree angle where it sits flush against the backboard, I don't think you're gonna have a lot of luck getting it to open and make the A-frame that we're looking for. So to make the legs, I cut my two by threes down to, or one and a half by threes, down to 36 inches. I cut my little angles, I set them in place where the bottom of the leg hits the bottom of the apron. They don't have to be perfect, but that's just how I set it. Once they're in place, I drill a hole on each side. Oh, no, 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 no. Once they're in place, I have a bottom support for the legs that I screwed into place. I then take the legs out, lay it down, and I set my inside brace to go in between each leg. So the bottom foot brace is the same width as the backboard and the apron frame itself. It's 24 inches long. The inside between the leg support is actually 17 and three quarter inches long. And that set out to be just perfect of what I needed. Didn't give me a lot of room to put a washer between the leg and the apron, but it's working just fine without it. So the first thing I did was set that bottom support. Then I took the legs out and I put that inside support roughly where I wanted it, make sure it's square, pre-drill all my holes and screw it into place using two and a half inch exterior screws. Once that is done, it is time to attach the legs and then you can be finished. So to do that, I use some 5 8 inch wide by four inch long bolts. You don't have to go that long. That's just what I wound up picking up when I was at the Home Depot. I used the four inch long bolts, threw a couple of washers, threw a couple of nuts, tighten it down and it opens and closes the way that it's supposed to do. Now you could stop here, but I decided I want a little bit of character because I do want to try to sell these on Facebook. So I engraved my logo. Now that was quite the fiasco. I used my X-Tool P2 with the riser base and I was able to fit this entire thing inside of the laser engraver. And it worked pretty well. It took some adjustments, but it worked well. You certainly don't have to do this step. You can do whatever you want. You could draw it, you could stencil it, however you want to do it. I don't have any stencils and I really wanted to use the tool. So that's what I did. So once I had burn stock engraved, I went ahead and engraved a little target on it. I think the target looks a little chintzy. I'm not gonna use the engraver next time to do that. I actually will get a stencil. And I probably should, especially if I wanna sell more of these, make that target a little bit bigger. But this is what we got and it works just fine. Once that's done, I kinda, kinda roughly sanded the edges a little bit before I engraved it. Roughly sanded it just to knock off the sharp corners, knock off the stamps from where you bought the lumber from. Do the engraving. After it's engraved, I slap some tongue roll on it off screen just to give it a little bit of extra protection, but it's really not necessary. Now it's time to start chunking some axes at this thing. Ha ha! Ah, oh, good. Do you get another shot? <laughs> My goodness. So look at the camera. State your name. Marcus. How would you rate the Burnstock hatchet board? One, from one to ten. Ten being the greatest. Ten. That's what I'm talking about. Next. Look at the camera. State your name. Colby. How would you rate the Burnstock hatchet board? Nine out of ten. How would you rate the Burnstock hatchet board? <laughs> 10 out of 10. That's a good answer. Look at the camera. State your name. Ashley. How would you rate the Burnstock hatchet board? Mm, 8 out of 10. Well, you're not my kid. I can't fix that answer. Thank you. I'm just kidding. 10 out of 10. Okay. 10 out of 10, folks. Well, you're looking beautiful today. Thanks. This lovely lady is? Katie. 
How would you rate the Burnstock Hatchet Board? 10 out of 10. Just like your supper. Thank you. Look at the camera. It's raining. State your name. Jacob. How do you rate the Burnstock Hatchet Board? Turtles. Excuse me? <laughs> Turtles. Turtles. Okay. It's raining. We got to go inside. Overall, this is a very fun build. It's a very fun project, especially if you're doing it for yourself. If you're doing it to sell, it's very easy to do, and you could probably pump these out pretty quickly. Six two by fours, some screws, some bolts, and you're golden, good to go. About $20 expense. I'm gonna give you the cut list real quick because I've got to do the plans, but I'm leaving on vacation tomorrow, so it's gonna take about a week, week and a half to get the plans actually posted. So get a pen and paper. I'm gonna tell you the cut list right now. Are you ready? You, you got a pen, okay, okay, all right. Backboard, you need eight three inch thick by one and a half inch, I'm sorry. Try this again, third time. The backboard, you need eight three inch wide by one and a half inch thick by 46 inch long pieces. I recommend cutting those to 48 inches, roughly, and then after you glue it, you cut the whole panel down to 46 inches. Your side rails, you need two 46 inch long by three inch wide by one and a half inch thick. Your legs, you need two 36 inch by three inch by one and a half inch. For your top and bottom cap, for your, ap your top and bottom aprons, you need two three inch wide, 21 inch long by one and a half inch thick. <clears throat> I might convert to metric just to save myself some, man. For your middle support, you need one 17 and three quarter inch long by three inch wide by one and a half inch thick. Let me make sure I got everything. I think that's everything. Oh, your bottom support, 24 inch long, three inch wide, one and a half inch. All my paper just fell out of my binder. Okay, so the bottom support, 24 inch long, three and a half, three, three inch, three inch wide, one and a half inch thick. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going on vacation. I hope you enjoyed the video. You will definitely enjoy that. That's a fun project. That's a great build. Free plans will be coming on my website. When I post the free plans, I'll make a community post. If you're subscribed to my newsletter on my website, you'll automatically get a copy of the free plan sent to you. I'm going to roll out. Oh, catch you on the next one.